Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lucas Espresso Repair. Here we have this beautiful Gaia Anima Deluxe Espresso Machine. Now for this machine we're going to just basically disassemble the whole thing. Uh, we're going to take the entire thing and I'm going to walk you through the entire process of disassembling the panels, disassembling some parts of the machine, a little bit of the tricks and a few, a few things that I have learned uh, working with these beautiful machines. Okay, so now that the cover is back, I'm going to just show you a few things that you can do. Um, first of all, we can just remove the water tank. And should you have enough space for all the parts that are going to be coming out, from, out of this machine. So, put the water tank here. Have another place. For the spouts, this is a nice little trick. Let me just show you. For the spouts, you just have to press against this area. It's a very easy thing to break this, uh, unfortunately. I will explain you in a bit. Let me just put it to the side. As I was saying, for the spouts, uh, you just have to press against this. Just push it, push it here, and also push it from the other side too. So you gotta push both sides, and then wiggle it a bit. When you do that, then the whole thing will just come out. It's just rubber holding it together, and you just basically are kind of wiggling that thing. You're pushing this against it, and you just release it like that. So that's how you remove them over here. There's two rubber pieces right here that attach to the rails on the inside of this area. And if you see a lot of um, coffee buildup or anything inside here and you see it very dirty, don't, uh, there's a high chance that the other spouts that are located right here, these two that you see in here are also clogged. So you might need to run some cleaner through the machine. Uh, you can do some, use some tablets and uh, you can just use uh, the pre-ground function of the machine and run it through the longest uh, shot that you have, the espresso lungo basically and then that will clean some of the areas of the inner spouts as well as some of the areas of the spout itself so yeah we remove that and we put it to the to the other table let's focus on this steamer part like like i say it's very easy to break um the top piece goes into the middle and then you have this little kind of spa a space right here Using a screwdriver or your nail can sometimes be, um, you can use a screwdriver or something to kind of pry it out. You just want to pry it just a little bit out, just enough to get this in this position. And then you pull down and that's how you remove it. If you don't do it like that, you, and you're going to snap this, uh, this bit right here and then you will not be able to put it back. And then you're going to have to order a new one. For this one, well, you simply unscrew that big screw all the way you can just push the inner one uh, usually you will get the two o-rings over here and those o-rings you can replace as well uh, and you can also replace the teflon part as you can see this one is already kind of cracked so we might actually end up replacing the entire thing we're gonna be we're gonna be inspecting this machine very well so uh, let's we'll, we'll inspect that part once we have the whole machine uh, out of the machine out of the frame but yeah that's how you remove these ones and uh, remember the little screw don't forget it and the little cover um, when you put it back again you know that this part goes on the top and then you just insert and then it stays in place and uh, even this one broken stays um, and you just lay that and you try a different part you will break it so make sure this part goes up and this one will go down so it attaches to it all right, so let's move on to the other part of the machine. Okay, now that I got gloves, let's remove the tray. As always, remember to push on this side. Don't try to pull it and jank it off. You're gonna break it, you know. Just make sure you put this out completely. And if you have the steamer, the steamer to the side, spouse all the way up, you pull this out. Remember to push here or you will break it. For this area, we'll just push inside. There you go. Push it inside and grab it to here, and then just push the entire original assembly like that. And then this little plate goes out as well. And that's as much as we can remove from the machine without uh, removing too many parts of the oven. Here we can start inspecting some of the areas of the machine. So yeah, let's go. Let's go on the top. Let's try. Let's start uh, removing some of the screws from the inside of the machine. 
okay this is the grinder side of the machine uh, there is a magnet sensor right here be careful that cable can um, if you pull it too hard can snap always put have a container to put the screws mm -hmm. this one slides all the way don't try to jank it off as well um, like I was saying this one just slides in and out do not try to jank it you will actually break this and then you will have to either glue this back into place uh, epoxy it back into place or you will have to just replace the entire part um, this only holds this uh, magnet into position so you can sometimes uh, get away by just gluing this magnet into it um, if he ever that gets damaged you can always replace the entire magnet magnet and then you can replace the entire case itself so you're not damaging the machine or anything you're just securing the magnet so that's what you can do with this little piece let's move it out and take it into our parts table like I said a lot of pieces are gonna come out of this machine um, there's usually a screw right here I probably remove it already and also all these are the uh oh this one doesn't say d8 d number eight eight um screwdriver bits so that's that's what you're gonna be needing and you can remove this all all the way uh there's one two three on the water tank side four five and six screws that you have to remove and that's just to loosen this area of the this part of the machine. Uh, you're still not in there. You have to remove the front and display. You wanna get you wanna get anything done on these models or machines. You will have to remove the whole front and display, which is pretty easy. Um, you have a couple of screws right here. You have three to be precise. Um, these are holding just this part that you see here. So you just have to remove those. Sometimes it would be very rusty or they would be very nasty. So just be careful. Um, sometimes you can actually end up um, breaking them. It's not a big deal, you can always replace them, but it's annoying to have a broken screw right there. Sometimes it gets stripped as well, but it's, it's, since it's on the outside of the machine, uh, it's very easy to, um, to get, get them out. And there will be another one right here when I remove it as well. So imagine I just removing it, to, to, to take it out, and then we can just grab the machine through this size. Like I'm gonna pry it out, grab it through the size, pry it out, and then push with your thumbs just a little bit, wiggle it down. There you go. It will snap just like that, and then you will have the entire frame. So you just gotta slowly move it. There's th these tabs that you need to make sure um, you remove. So that's why you have to push this against against each other. And when you wiggle it around, you kind of remove, go around them, and then you just snatch it out. So you just pull it out. Uh, be careful with the power button, as it can be easily, um, you can it can fall pretty easily, and you can lose it pretty easily as well. Um, sometimes it stays on the case. Uh, sometimes it stays stuck in here. So just be careful and. Um, no, don't scratch it, otherwise you would have to uh, replace it. It's very easy to scratch this part. So since we have this whole thing out, we can just put it to, into our parts table. Here's this um, area over here. This is holding kind of like the board itself. Um, this is also one way to see if somebody has already opened this machine or not. As you will see uh, in a bit that it kind of leaves a mark whenever we remove this access port. Uh -huh. just a little door but sometimes that this is the deluxe version so they put this kind of um, um, foam to prevent vibration from the case and it makes it much quieter but it's just a little plastic sleeve and this can just be removed like this there you go little thing this this is what is holding it into place this is just uh, resting in it back into our parts table to our parts tray and okay so here's a little tricky area now these ones they do have a little kind of um tab inside of the of the machine so you can just need a little screwdriver you just push it all the way or get this thing there you go just push it from the inside but remember to just push it out now 
remember to hold these two together these two together are two separate pieces but they are two uh they, it's easy to, if you just grab this thing the whole the whole front, the whole uh assembly will just fall down to you so remember to just grab it here and pull this down there you go and this is like i said two pieces we can put that in the trail part and let's disconnect this um connection we don't want to damage it so we can just slowly pry it out mm -hmm. there you go there you go there you go easy no damage out and then we'll have very uh, we will have a lot of um we'll take care of this part and make sure it doesn't get wet or, or damaged or anything this is the board itself and you don't really want to damage this piece very expensive okay so now we are kind of halfway into the machine itself we can actually yeah now uh, remove the panels remove the top panel you can see the sensor itself just push it down in here you don't want to pull this tab up and then um get the sensor trapped between the panel top panel and then the machine you will be pulling the entire thing so you know just slowly move it around it will slowly come out to about this distance uh, there, we still got two more cables to, to disconnect from this machine. Let me show you from the other side. There you go. Uh, you will see that we have to disconnect the water tank. Uh, the hose to, that goes to the water tank. And then we will have to disconnect the water tank sensor. This is just a little cover. Let's look at it right here. Mm -hmm. Take it out. Take it out. There you go. We disconnected this thing. And then we can just remove the entire top panel. This is where we have the water tank. This is where the hopper is. It's a good opportunity to clean everything, clean the funnel. You have a compressor, blow a lot of air in through here. And you know, this is a good place to just wipe it down a bit. But this is the whole uh, top part of the machine. All right, this goes to the bar table. And here we have the machine itself. It's a whole machine. We have the grinder right here. We have the two-way uh, solenoid valve of the machine itself. Uh, of the machine, uh, these uh, delivers water to the steamer and to, to have water, of course. And this uh, is controlled by power. So if you're not getting any water or anything, you can always check the voltage here. If you're getting any kind of uh, power or anything, that means that the board is still okay. Or, you know, sometimes these connections can go bad, something can disconnect. Things happen, you know. It's always to check that you're getting power. If you're hitting a click and nothing is happening, then of course you're getting power. So it's just probably clogged. You can unclog it, uh, but it's best to just replace. It's best to just replace itself. Um, you can replace the, 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 the body, you can leave the transformer in, or you can just replace the entire thing, depending on what you're doing or um, what you want to do. But yeah, this is a way to check it. And this is a two-way valve. You can see this is the grinder. You have different kind of... Um, here's another grinder that we can actually use. Um, we can transfer this motor to here. Uh, the only thing that happened to this grinder is one of the... Uh, um, just basically snap. This, this part basically just snap. And it's the, the grinder still works everything still works inside so we can just transfer a lot of these parts into this one and basically just rebuild it rebuild the entire grinder and of course you can always buy the new part and you can install it there water pump is located right there you can see it here um, you can do see a lot of inspection if you are just diagnosed in this machine this is a good place to stop because we already did quite a lot by removing all these panels and all these things but over here we can check the condition of the machine we can check the the temp the thermostats we can check the hoses if there's any leaks we can check if there's the, anything going on with the air valve or if the water pump is uh, um, is having any issues we can check a lot of things right here um, in order to test them, you will still have to put the whole machine back together, which is a pain. But over here, you can test a lot of things. We're still not done. We're going to be taking the entire frame itself. Um, it's much easier to work with this machine without the frame. Uh, even though I know it's a pain uh, to, to do it, but it's much easier to just 
take the entire thing, remove it from the frame itself, and just start working on it. Put everything uh, perfectly, put it back together, and then just test. Because you don't really want to miss something and then do the whole work uh, back again. We're gonna also be cleaning here uh, as well. This is the spouts that I was mentioning earlier. But these are the two uh, inner spouts. Uh, once you remove the entire front display, just like we did, uh, these are the two inner spouts. Uh, these are held by uh, these four tabs on the side. Uh, you gotta be very careful or you can break them. And if you break them, you will have to um, replace it. You will just have to replace it. You don't wanna risk having just three over here. Even though it stays very firm and it will not move, um, you really don't want to risk it i mean you can always put a seat tie around it to be honest and you know it's it's just only to hold it into place it's not really doing anything it doesn't interfere with any of the parts of the machine there's no movement here there's no electricity it's just a piece of plastic over here like, like i said you can always do a lot of little things to repair this this uh but if you end up breaking it you can always do use the seat tie thing you don't really have the replacement so uh what else is in here oh yeah over here is the um, what distributor valve. This one is very fragile, so you're doing any kind of work with the hoses or anything, or have this part available because there's a high chance these will snap. As soon as you're kind of fiddling with the with the with the water hoses, you will put a little bit of pressure, and then you will just snap the part. So this one is best to just kind of do remove everything, um, remove all these ho pins, remove all these hoses, take the entire thing out, and do the work outside and then clamp the hoses and then don't touch it because yes this thing will snap uh, but we're gonna get into more detail once i remove most parts of this machine but this is what you can see from here from this perspective you can like i say you can test a lot of the machine just by stopping here and uh but we can still go further we can still go take it one step uh take it to the next step uh and just remove a, bun a couple of other screws and then take the entire thing out which we're going to be doing in just one bit okay now that we're back let's uh take a this screw starting with this screw uh, i haven't touched anything let's just remove this screw this one is holding the frame okay there you go another screw another screw we open this thing and then this is very easy to remove once you have the whole frame this one just goes up so you can always do that you're gonna be open this door just just do that just remove it um you don't want to snap any of these little tabs which are very very easy to snap and you don't want to snap this one either because this one is the one that controls the the door switch this one activates it um the tray uh pushes this forward and then this activates the switch so yeah you don't want to damage that mm -hmm. this over here there's there's two screws as you can see here we remove those There you go. This one's right here also. You need to be need to be removed as they're holding the inside frame and the outside frame kind of together. We'll remove those two as well. There you go. This thing just just push it forward. There's like a, two little tabs over here. And uh, as you see them, you just push, pull this like this and then you remove it. This one holds the frame as well to the other frame. Yep, you don't need those, those two. Once you remove those two, boom, the whole thing just dies out. The whole frame can be rest on the other side of the machine. Or it can be rest at the bottom, but trying to do that as there's two switches over here so this side is a perfect way to um, leave the machine to rest without damaging anything and as you can see we have the whole frame completely out the whole thing beautiful just to take a peek at our parts table as you can see we have quite a lot of little parts over here um, we could probably make it do make a better job at putting them together but you know you need a lot of space for for these machines whenever you you take them up apart okay now that we're closer we and we got the whole machine basically in our hands uh, we can inspect a lot of the components properly 
this is a good way to check for leaks do any kind of work i mean you already are here you can replace the flow meter replace a bunch of the hoses if they're like really really bad uh if there's any kind of corrosion in the motherboard you can just replace it you can you can do pretty much everything in here since the machine is already out um replacing these thermostats will be much easier as well and replacing the entire boiler even as well you're just gonna be just removing a few screws tuk, 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 and then this thing is out this over here is very fragile so you try to like uh, undo it from the top unless you have very specific tools you are not going to do it you're gonna have to undo the entire machine and it's much easier to work on it like this and you can just uh, always replace the entire connection you can replace the hose as well uh, whenever you replace uh, you know two way back you're gonna have to you have had to replace the, these connections as well and maybe the hose if you damage it so for this machine, we're just going to be um, replacing some parts of the grinder. We're going to be replacing the grinder. Uh, this grinder is from, I believe, uh, let's see, what the machine is from 2015. So this machine is from 2015. So the grind, this is the original grinder. You can see it from the color. Uh, the newer ones are, are, are like this. Uh, these are the new the new models of the of the Gagia Gagi, Gagi, uh, machines. Uh, it's basically the exact same thing. It's just, um, uh, this is just much newer. This is from 2021. Uh, and uh, this thing just snap uh, the whole the, the burrs uh, the motor itself is in good condition uh, it's still dialing dial, dials and everything so i'm just going to be replacing so i'm going to be swapping some of these parts into these parts so i can just kind of use 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 the machine so we're going to be replacing the grinder we're definitely replacing the water pump and we're definitely replacing the two-way pad as always so yeah that's what we're going to be doing in, in a bit let's go So for the grinder, um, since it's already here, you can even replace the grinder without taking it apart, which is the beauty of this machine. Uh, you can just disconnect from here, um, remove this one, uh, don't lose it, remove the, uh, the adjustment. You can always uh, mark where the adjustment is, so that way you don't lose it. So you mark uh, mark this area over here, mark the, where it is, um, usually, usually it's between these two together, so you know, I'm just going to leave it like this. And, and I'm gonna be replacing the grinder. So this setting doesn't really, I don't really need this setting. We're taking the um, rubber. This thing can be clean. Uh, once you have the whole thing, you can just wiggle it down. You have another connection at the bottom. You can just remove it like so. Remember to press into these little tabs so that way they just slide out. And then you just basically have the entire uh, grinder. Uh, oh, there's also this little cable, a uh, little uh, fragile, as you can just, you can damage it. But you just gotta remove this tab, push up. There you go, push up. This thing just slides out. Usually you take the entire cable. If and if you didn't, you will just remove this uh, all the way out, and then you can just slowly pry the cable out and remove it. Uh, this sensor is very important, so remember to uh, have it uh, available on your uh, on the other grinder. So this is a grinder that takes how much beans and how much rotations, uh, how much coffee is inside the, your your shot, and it communicates with the board itself so it definitely is a, is a very needed component mm -hmm. there you go we're going to be removing this uh, this one we're also going to be transferring into this um this other grinder as the other uh, other chip got transferred to the to the to the original grinder of this ma other machine when we replace it so yeah we're going to be using some of these parts um like I said, you can just do it without taking the frame out or anything. This thing just pops out and then you're good to go. So now let's just focus on the grinder replacement and... Okay, we have the old, the old grinder over here. Uh, what is it called? 34B... 54C01... This is from 2015, and uh, you can see some corrosion already into here. Oh, sorry, you were not looking at. Um, like I was saying, uh, this is from 2015, so this is the original grinder of the of the machine. You can see a little bit of carbon buildup and some kind of corrosion here. Um, yeah, I think it's a good time to retire this this beautiful grinder. This one is from 2021. Uh, like I say, the only thing that happened to this grinder, this thing snap, um, this thing right here. So we can just um, disassemble both of these grinders and then pass some of the plastic parts onto here and leave the drive, um, the, the grinder, 
the motor uh, in this place and then use the bars and some parts. So yeah, let's just, let's just do that. Okay, so this is the old grinder of the machine. Taking this off, this you push inside and then you twist. See, now once you remove, once you rotate it all the way, you will see where it will stop. That little tap, you will see it there in three pieces, three places. And then from here, you just pry this way up. This way up, you wiggle it down, boom, there you go, this way up. You can wiggle it down, up and down, and then just light out like this. Um, usually it's full of coffee and it's kind of a little stuck. You're kind of grinding some of that uh, as well as you're spinning it backwards. And here's where you can just replace the porters itself. You can just clean it. Um, if there's any mold or anything, you can just you can still reuse it. You can you can still serve as a grinder, and you can still reuse a lot of these parts uh, of the. So we're just going to remove some of that coffee buildup. We'll use a little brush to just clean it. We'll just leave a brush to clean it. There you go. We have this right here and. We're gonna have to reuse this as well, so we're gonna have to remove it from the bottom. Okay. So as we remove the top bar, top bar of the grinder, and let's just this part is a little bit more sensible. You don't want to have a lot of uh, coffee, so let's just clean this area and let's clean these grinders as well. Have a little compressor here. As you can see the compressor can do a really good job just cleaning it itself you can just call it a day put it back together in here and then the, the grinder will just work better than ever you're not replacing this but we are replacing this grinder so we're gonna have to do the same for this one okay now we can flip the grinder itself and then we just start undoing these screws these are the screws that are holding the motor of the grinder to the burrs there you go again be careful you don't wanna get this dry shot dirty um, this is basically what we are placing on the other grinder we can put this on a cleaner place in a clean place and then this is a part that we really are not going to be using we're not going to be needing this at all we grab our other motor and then we just lap it on there you go snap into place feeling good then we can just put back the screws we can just put back the screws and then we're gonna remove this area this as well from the grinder stick it out there you go out i'm gonna install the older one From here, come on. It's a little tricky because you don't wanna, you don't wanna remove, you wanna, don't wanna break this, and you gotta slowly work your way out. Um, there's probably a proper way to remove this, but I haven't really found it yet. Uh, there you go. The only way I have found is just to slowly wiggle it out and get the whole thing sliding in out of the chamber and then I just slide the, this one as is into the other grinder and I also wiggle it down there you go until it clicks back into place and then boom we just transfer the sensor from here to the other side 
using a little flathead uh, screwdriver to help me guide it out and then I just slide it in and that's why we got the base uh, we got the oh, that screw should not be there this is magnetic be careful remember always check before you even connect it that there's nothing in here um, yeah I think we can just leave it as is because this is the setting of the of the of the, of the machine and we're just gonna clean it better around and put the top burr bur on, uh, on the on, on it good then we can just take it out and there you have it pretty clean we can insert the back Now we're gonna be putting the top part of the grinder. Let's clean it as well. We can use our compressor too. Very clean. forget about there this one can go out this one can go out this one is also not gonna be used we're still using everything from the other one so we serviced it this should get into this area there you go make sure you get the three together push against it and then twist once you twist you can leave it like this that's exactly where we can start um, calibrating the machine we can just start by um, doing it from the courses setting and once we got the courses setting we can just adjust this uh, adjustment knob and just turn it a little bit to the left or right depending on how we are adjusting it but we're done with the grinder we can just put it back inside the machine uh, the grinder is already just uh, ready to be in, uh, installed we just put it to the side so that way we can focus on the other issues of the machine in this case the water pump is definitely getting replaced and the two-way bar is getting replaced so we can just work on those right now okay so now that we have the water, the machine like this this is perfect to replace the water pump we're going to disconnect some of these connections when they make these connections they make sure they really make them properly so they're going to be extremely hard to disconnect and if you try to remove the water pump from the top uh, like i did in the last video what you're gonna is going to happen is that you're just going to end up disconnecting um, the entire uh, the entire cable and then you will have to just do this again slowly remove it there you go we we'll remove the fuse we can disconnect the pump there we go and it's out perfect that, ca that connection is out That one is out as well. Now this is a tricky one because if you're not careful, you can end up damaging the entire uh, assembly. You end up breaking this piece. You end up breaking this piece. The only thing that you gotta do is disconnect this hose and connect the uh, other um, the, this hose to the water tank uh, frame because this one is like a bypass from the water tank if the water tank starts leaking uh, the water that gets collected in there will just drip through here and then into the tray itself right outside here so in the case that you end up breaking this part while removing the water pump you can always secure the water pump uh, make a hole over here um, secure it with a zip tie or something and then just reroute this hose from the water tank into here it's basically the exact same thing you're just bypassing this area of the frame you can still save the machine you don't need a new frame or anything and you and the machine will not have any problems it will work and drain the way it's supposed to so just leave an extra tip Okay, remove this one out of here this one is just connected straight into that hole 
um, maybe you can see it. Just connecting it to that hole. You see it? Where my finger is. There you go. There you go. This one right here. Um, this is where you, where you need to connect these holes. It goes all the way inside. So we're just gonna disconnect the water pump. It's much easier to disconnect when it's outside. Just gotta rotate it. Disconnect, remove this part. Install it on the newer one. And then let's air out this uh, pump. Pump ready to go. You just rotate this. Be very careful. You're putting a metal piece into a plastic one. So you can totally strip this and then you're gonna have to replace the the valve which is not pretty fun as you can see there's a a hot temperature um hose in there and there's a clamp so you'll have to get have a new clamp have probably a new hose this might break so yeah there's it's, there's a lot of complications if you end up breaking this little piece hopefully i don't end up breaking this little piece otherwise uh, it would be really really bad mm -hmm. all right we make sure we get it all the way it's nice and tight let me get my tool. I like using a 12 millimeter um, wrench to just insert it here and to fill it, but you can also use use pliers. Uh, of course, you're gonna damage it a bit. Hold it by your fingers and just just slowly give it a good tight. Not enough to break it, but not enough to not leak. There you go. And there you go. You can just leave it alone. Remember, the connections go. It's just remove it from, let's just put it the way it's supposed to go connections go down and this goes in here and i'm inserting the hose into the little hole that i showed you before reconnecting this reconnecting this rubber plug in the way Disconnect it back again into the pump and this going here into the other water pump right here. There you go. Connection secure. Connection secure. Connection secure. Connection to the flow meter secure. Do not forget this one. You forget this one and then you put the water tank in there you're gonna have a big a very bad time the, the water is just going to um to drip all the way through here so just keep it in the middle like this as a reminder for yourself that you need to um hook that one up um now over here do not forget to pump to plug in the uh the water pump because otherwise you will have to come back here the one with the fuse is the one that goes on the left There you go, good connection. And the black one is the one that goes on the other, on the right. There you go. Going through here, going through here. No connection, no, 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 there you go. As a precaution, I like to put zip ties on every single one of these. These are rated to 300 and 280 Fahrenheit approximately. So these ones will stay into in con into contact with the with the hose. It will just it's just to prevent any leaks. Like I said, you don't really want to have any kind of leaks or any kind of problems once you finish working with this machine. You want to do everything uh, that you can do, uh, and then just you know leave it alone. There you go. Now this might be a bit overkill, but it's just a little insurance for. For that you're not gonna have any leaks once you start scanning the machine you never know I have so you're already here just just secure the, the, the hose as you can this one goes right here below the Olka water pump connection
um, making sure this will not leak from here or here. Careful with cables, good. And then we have another one for this one. Which we'll put once uh, we have the, the whole frame in there. So there it is, new water pump. It's in the right position, cables in there, secure, all hoses ready. Uh, this one secure as well. This one into the hole, perfect. And all right, good to go, good to go over here. Now let's go that two-way valve over here. Now for this two-way valve, I am going to just remove, uh, I, I don't have the transformer, I only have this area. So I'm just gonna be swapping this from here. And we're gonna be using the same transformer as the transformer definitely works and we're just gonna keep using it. This one is just to hold this piece in here. We can pass it to the newer one. You buy a newer one, usually it comes with a transformer. And then these ones, uh, it's gonna go out. Uh, you're gonna have to replace them anyway. So you, with your cutters, you can just pry it out. Grab a bit and then just... Take it out like this. We're gonna be replacing these ones anyway. out rotate rotate grab and rotate there you go same for these ones this one's gonna go out grab it mm -hmm. careful with fingers as always mm -hmm. there you go there you go and then we can just take it out there you go this one out this one rotates out good and we got the older one this is the older one not really working um there's really not a lot you can do on these things um uh, they're replaceable so just just replace the entire thing you can try try the scaler and move it some of them uh, uh, some of these valves are removable these ones unfortunately are not they're kind of soldered uh, to themselves so yeah there's not really a lot you can do on here uh, they usually have like a little magnet that goes up and down a little spring the little uh, there's a little rubber too that prevents water from going to the other side when this thing uh, when the transformer sends power to when the machine sends power to these this basically magnetizes, opens up the valve, pushes it all the way up. Water goes through here, from here to here. And then once this uh, loses power, the, the magnet goes all the way down because of the spring. Uh, it pushes into here and then stops the water from flowing through the other side. So that's what it does. And over time, they will get clogged with scale buildup or the transformer itself will just die. Uh, but usually it's this piece that just um, gets, the water goes in here. So depending on your quality of your water, you, you might be end up clogging the entire thing. So this one gets replaced. We're gonna get the little two um, replacement. There you go. I'm just gonna insert it into here. The new the new locking ring in the bottom. We we'll insert this one back in there. A uh, new locking ring as well into here. We we'll insert all the way. Make sure it's all the way. Then you just um, set it into its place rotate it so it's very comfortable you're not forcing the hose you're not forcing anything and then now once you have it into the good position you can start clamping the, the clip very well clamp not going anywhere This is not going to leak. We put the transformer back in there. Secure it. This doesn't need to be fully secure. 
because it needs to be in there just give it a little tight done and that's it we just replace the two-way valve it's that easy you can replace the two-way valve without taking the whole machine apart as well which is which is the great thing you can also service this thing that which is where, where we're gonna go next um without taking the whole apart but without with, with this it's much much more comfortable to just work in in, in here because you, well, you have more more space to clamp the, the holes you have more space to do stuff than to actually try to do it in here so yeah this is the best way to do it mm, now let's just this is the grinder thing this is the water tank and the sensor there all right good so let's just service the other parts now this is the part that is kind of very is very tricky to to it's very easy to break so since i already have the entire thing uh already uh removed let's take the whole thing apart let's remove it from here mm -hmm. perfect this one i'm gonna separate it because i want to put the exact same one in there ah there you go the whole thing come out came out perfect you can always i mean you can always just replace the entire thing and you don't have to think about anything just just replace it don't think about anything it's all it's all good the whole thing will just will just work but since we already have it here let's service it for real we're removing this hose this actually uh transfers the uh, let me go here um like i was saying we're just gonna be removing this hose take it out from here and this is just the hose that transfers the liquid from the brew unit into the into your cup literally into the cup these are the upper spouts of it but this one is the one that you see on the door on the other side of the door whenever you open it this little thing is what you see um right here there's a little hose sometimes this will leak sometimes this will be will come out as well especially there was a lot of pressure for example there was a lot of coffee in here and the machine tried to push all that and then just pop out all the water is just gonna go through here through the front you will see a bunch of water going through the entire thing Usually it means th is this one. This is the one that needs to be replaced. That means the whole uh, frame needs to be removed. And since we're already here, we're gonna be cleaning this. We're gonna soak this into Joglo, uh, uh, or um, you can just use Cafisa or any coffee detergent, hot water, and that, and then you're good to go. You can just soak this. Uh, we're gonna be soaking all this into that. Um, so we'll be right back once we soak this entire thing into um, into. Um, the coffee the coffee detergent since we have it here let's just open it as well mm, like i said this is a tricky part uh, as requires a little pressure from both sides there you go it's much easier once you have it out like this you still need a little um screwdriver to kind of help you mm -hmm. there you go up 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 all the way up yeah we have two apply pressure just like a jura brew unit and then slowly slow rotate 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 there you go oh my goodness look at that so like i was saying this area gets super clogged with coffee um this is these are the inner spouts of the machine this go in front of the um front of the machine itself they go like this and as you can see, all that is coffee buildup. All of that is just coffee buildup. I never seen it like this. is the first time I actually seen like a like a layer of like what is that? Looks like a layer of coffee or wow! Like I have never seen something like this. Let me know if you ever seen something like this in the comments down below. That is just so bizarre and. It's like crystallized all over the place. It's like the whole, it's like, it's like plastic. What is this? I mean, we can still clean it. Uh, probably it's just coffee residue that just crystallized over time. I was left there. Uh, that little residue that it goes around uh, over time, it kind of crystallizes itself like this. So this is what we're actually seeing, which is pretty cool. Um, can you focus? Focus, there you go. That is so unique to see. I've never seen it like this. Wow, and it was just seen like this. Like the whole shape of the of the of upper spouts. This definitely needs some cleaning. I am so happy I took this hole apart. This go this is going to get soaked into Joglo immediately. 
with hot water, really hot water. I'm brushing everything around here. All right, let's be, let's, let's soak this thing. Okay, I got a little bit of hot water. I got a little bit of cafisa or my ornaments. Um, just gonna put a bunch of it. Fair enough. And I'm just gonna soak this whole piece in there. Um, soak the whole thing. The important part, which is the, this part that holds the coffee. This one is just attaches to the to the machine. I'm gonna put the entire uh, cover as well. There you go. And of course, I'm putting the entire thing here. This is one of the most dirty ones I've ever seen. You can already see the color uh, of the water just changing to coffee color. So I'm just gonna let it soak. Uh, we're gonna be soaking a lot of other parts, like the parts of our grinder in there too. Um, because why not? We're just gonna clean it from the coffee uh, buildup. Same with these ones. We're gonna just soak them in there. I'm also putting the steamer here into the everything that goes in, in there I'm just gonna let it sit there for a bit by the time we finish with the machine it should be better clean and since we have the whole machine in here why not just clean it up a bit while we're waiting for the other parts to get cleaned by the detergent we already replaced the two-way valve of the machine. We already replaced the water pump. Flow meter doesn't need to be replaced, uh, but if we're having any kind of problems, we'll definitely come back and, and do this again. I don't think so, because this rarely go bad. Plus, the hoses look very well. The one on the occasion to know that you, you might need to replace the flow meter is like if this hose was looking horrendous and it will just be like a full of scale bill and stuff or coffee and then you will see this brown tube full of coffee and 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 other things then yes I would recommend just replace the whole flow meter uh, replace a whole water pump if you can replace the hoses or just clean them very well uh, citric acid is, it does a really good job as well as you know you can just clean them with your glow rinse them very well put citric acid and put them once back again in here uh, so you can just really um, clean them hoses but it's best to just replace it they're very contaminated um, this one they look really good so once we have um, this kettle going to the entire machine and through the, the entire place it's going to be a clean uh, and work, good uh, working machine everything else seems to be in good shape um, the, the thermal block seems to be in good shape as well too and I think we're, we're, we're pretty much done with the, with the machine we just gotta put it back together and uh, clean some of the other areas that we haven't done and that's it just put it back together we we'll wait for those other parts to uh, get clean and then we'll just reassemble Right, so here we have the frame the frame gets is one of the most dirtiest part of the machine um, if there's any kind of spillage of coffee water or anything everything will just go right here as you can see um, this frame is from 2015 so definitely it has, has been has seen his his use you know there's a couple of coffees that have been done on this machine for sure and we're just gonna brush it off and clean it nothing really crazy to do here if it's broken this is very easy to replace um i don't know how much the part it is but you know you just get to this part and then you just swap it to the newer one and then you're done for example you just drop the the machine and then one of the these panels cracks just order this one do the whole thing disassemble swap it and don't think about it Once you finish wiping a lot of the areas, you can always use the compressor to blow a little bit of the parts here. And some areas are hard to reach.
water to clean. Better clean. Alright, they've been soaking for quite a bit already. We're gonna help them by brushing them and removing as much as we can out of this. And we're also gonna be using the compressor. To remove a lot of the coffee balled up and all of the little places that we will not be able to reach with the brush. Okay, so we just disconnected the entire thing. We're just brushing it from the inside. Gotta make sure this thing is as clean as it can possibly be. Making sure there's no coffee build up in here. On to here. It would be best to just clean to be to, to replace to be honest. Now with everything kind of clean we can just put this one right here back into place finish cleaning this and for putting this back we just gonna put this into its place there's nothing else that goes in here can just put this like so and click click all sides secure this thing is ready to do to be installed also gonna be putting to this back in here and all the way back in here and then we're good to to go Okay, now that we have the whole machine here, we can just uh, start installing this part. <laughs> this goes all the way to here. Make sure you reconnect that. We're reconnecting that screw. go in position to worry about in position this one in position spouse in position I think we can just put the frame now Grab the whole machine, turn it back to the front. Make sure you grab it properly. All the way in. Everything secure, everything where it should be. Nothing going out. We are good to start putting everything. We gotta secure this to the other frame. Oh, we also have this one that we forgot to clean. This is clean. And now we can just put it on the side of the machine. Make sure you just lap it out. Uh, before you close it, make sure you put the screws that you need to put in here. There's one right here. Mm. 
two right here. We got those two. Let's get the front side installed too. This one right here. Same way we put it up. Perfect, we install this one. Alright, so we install these two, these two, these four over here, and this one over here. We can close this door and now focus on this one. And now we can install the grinder and install that one also here. Remember to put the spring back in there. Magnet sensor out of the way. Reconnect this. Connect first the, the sensor to this and then connect the clip. Make sure you are connecting the right side and not force it. On the way you will hear a click, you will feel a click. Same for this one, you will feel a click. This one just lies in. This one just lies in, you will feel the click right there for the sensor and then you will feel the you have to kind of push this one a bit up and then just kind of go up and down and then we go and then you would click into place now we're connecting back again the uh, grinder remember that this is DC power so you're gonna connect it the exact same way it was remember to put the uh, silicone in case at the bottom too Make sure it's dry. Insert it there. Insert the grinder. Cables, make sure they are at the bottom of the, on the right part, right here. And then these, slide it back and forth. Make sure you get it all the way has to be on those two little holes this one at the front and this one in the middle the whole grinder needs to kind of be bouncy like this then of course uh, make sure you connect the power to the to the right side white cable on top and the black cable at the bottom I need to get the bottom one I think it'd be easier to just get the connections first and then the there you go that's the black one going through here can you connect it into here there you go and again make sure everything is very well secure the cables on the right place it's a very tight space between the spring the cable management that you need to do and the space that you have there you go the sensor here and the other two sensors there Perfect, and we're just gonna put the other screw right above here. Mm -hmm. 
and this secure the back side of the case to the frame and now the frame is very secure in the whole machine we can start putting the top panels there you go it's very clean uh, this is for the water tank this is for the discharge valve the one that i was talking about earlier that if you break it or anything um, just a reminder that little hole over there if this gets broken uh, what you can do is disconnect the hose at the bottom that is connected through there extend the hose and connect it here right here um, it's going to function the exact same way it is not going to leak uh, you will still have to secure the water pump maybe better but um it will not leak into the into the machine it will leak straight into the uh, into the tray uh, that's where exactly what, it, what this does just like a little bypass uh, so you'll be bypassing this so you end up breaking this for any reason you can always uh, bypass it by extending the hose underneath there and then connecting another one right here all right we're almost about uh, done to, on this with this machine we're just going to be connecting the water tank sensor we run the water again There you go. Okay, the wire again. And now we're gonna be doing those connections that I was saying. Um, this one for the water tank, very important. Make sure you do not forget this one. If you do forget it and you manage to uh, get the water tank inside here, then all the water is just gonna go straight into the into that hole and it's not going to stop. So yeah, you don't want that. I like to zip tie this to make sure I don't accidentally um, disconnect it when I'm putting the pan panels. And also as a peace of mind for myself that the, this thing is connected and it is the way it should be. There you go. We got the silicones of the grinder. This one goes on the top. It's already clean. And also this one goes right here on the top too. Uh, make sure you secure it properly. There's like a little lip in there, in there, in there, all the way. Mm -hmm. See if we got moisture. Let me try to remove that. There you go. All right. And now it's installed into the machine. We wrap this magnet sensor through the cover. You don't want to pinch this while you are uh, pulling the panel. Make sure you get all the corners in there. You, in the grinder, you will see that there's little o ring over here. Uh, we're also missing the um, this part. Uh, we're just going to install it into the machine. Uh, but this will be the course setting, so this will be our course setting. There we go. Again, cable through the machine all the way up. Grab it through here. Make sure you're grabbing it. Make sure you have this op cover open, the hopper cover open, so that way you can see that you're placing the cover on top of the grinder and then force, uh, not forcing it, but just slowly. Uh, placing it into the machine you will kind of feel it when it's uh, in position and see everything kind of kind of would click into place if there's something that is not letting it go through there it's usually because there's something that is preventing it from you can always check and peek through here uh, if there's anything that you're missing that stuff um, it's feels secure it's just missing a few screws and uh, the spring is what is actually pushing this uh, uh, cover a little bit up so yeah we're, we're good to go we're gonna be connecting now the some parts of the of the of the board here two screws enough to have this very solid um, making sure this connection is secure this connection is good and we are going to put the display it's a good uh, place to, to to clean the display microfiber towel make sure it's a microfiber towel uh, it's easy to scratch it it's easier to make a, any kind of um, uh, fingerprint uh, or anything in there so just be very careful uh, it's a good opportunity to also clean the buttons this is a this is the only way we'll be able to see the entire button itself this will make it look amazing there you go now remember to connect this 
the connection port is right here this goes connected like that like so make sure you got enough space fill all the connections before you even press 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 and press 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 and then it's connected now insert the back support without this the bottom board will not work and now we, we can just put the display back in there slowly remember to put this back in if you do not have this inside the the, the machine then what's going to happen when you push these buttons this whole panel is just going to go forward you can actually end up breaking uh this cable you can end up breaking this part as well you push it too hard so make sure you have this support uh that we just installed as well as uh secure to the to the to the to the display now we can put this uh back in here this is just leave a cover there you go and we can either glue back or just leave this as is uh, from the machine so it's gonna stay into place and it's not gonna move and now we're just gonna put the display bar uh, on, on the machine <coughs> this one right here let's give it a wipe too then we just put the po power button right here this one slides like this uh, make sure you slide it forward let me let me see if I can get you a good angle okay so and um, you can kind of see it see through it uh, there you go you can kind of see through it you can see through it that's exactly what you're gonna be seeing through you put it at the lowest position you slowly wiggle it down uh, you make sure you are in the right place you wiggle 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 <clears throat> push this one all the way up and then push forward and that's exactly how you install this um this frontal display um as you saw it was very easy uh, as long as you're seeing that angle window and then you push it forward and straight uh, you should be able to just put it back without no issues and as you can see this play looks good and yeah that's exactly how you put it back now remember we're gonna put those two screws back so let's just would you all right so now we're gonna put the two of the longer ones and one of the tiny ones uh, the tiny one goes in the middle the two longer ones go over here because you're taking two panels just keep that in mind you know when you put it back you're grabbing two panels so twice the size you know of the regular screw versus the tiny one of the, uh, the machine yeah so this tiny one goes in the middle all right now you just make sure you just put this all the way forward you have to make sure you will feel it you will feel it before you even get to the top of it you will feel that it's on the right position because it will slide forward if you can slide it back and forth like this and it feels like something is attached to it you will not be able to pull it back or forward or anything then that means you are on the right position then you start squeezing one side and then you start squeezing the other side and then you wiggle it all the way up and that's how you get the the spouse in there so the spots are inside uh, we gotta get this thing also here mm -hmm. you can see some citric acid from the last time i this girl is machine here or what is that blue thing there you go there you go very clean i don't have the gaskets unfortunately of this i'm gonna be replacing the entire assembly so um this other one that you see right here um you i'm, I'm basically not going to install it i'm going to just show you how to install it you push this all the way back in uh, this one has a shape so it doesn't move make sure you push all that that shape all the way to the bottom you insert the two little o-rings there's two two o-rings and then you insert this all the way forward and then you can just insert the screw right here and then uh, let me just get the screw all right it's already in position so um now the cover would be let me get the black cover black cover again it goes this one to the top just slide it all the way um get the cover inside and then click and then this thing will click into place the pinarello thing which i do not have uh, also slides all the way here and then you just click on it and then you have the steamer one let's install the other screws into the, of the machine and now with all the screws already inside the machine 
we can just put everything back in reverse. Um, oh wait, forgot the, one of the sensors. Um, forgot about that. The sensor, that's the reason we took it outside and it's hanging in there. It's just to, to remind us that we have to put it. And as always, do not clip it. Slide it over. You clip it, you will break it. Um, make sure the cable is in the right place. Slowly put it back into it. The one, the, the weird looking conical shape one, um, screw is the one that goes in here. This one right here, this conical one, is the one that goes in here. You will see it because it has the shape of it as well. This thing has a, a conical shape on the where the screw goes. You will get it all the way. Uh, this is a good place to know that um, if you make sure that the magnet is in there, sometimes these falls uh, off and you don't want to have these uh, falling inside your grind, grinder and damaging all the work that we just did. So make sure you glue this back or um, yeah, make sure you glue this back or make sure this thing doesn't actually come off. Um, this one comes off, came off, so we're gonna have to glue it. And we're just going to uh, clean some of the area, uh, some of the parts of the machine. So, so it's because I don't wanna just throw them in there. I already cleaned the whole machine. I'm putting this one back in. This brew unit is gonna need some um, uh, cleaning, but I think it's in pretty good shape. Even the gasket looks good, so I'm just gonna insert it here. And we can just close now this door. We can close the other door. Remember, it doesn't have the magnet. We insert the tray back in. We insert the tray back in. Remember, pull the steamer to the side, otherwise you're gonna heat it. Pull this one up. Here we go. We're gonna have to um, replace these and also um, do the modification here or replace it since I'm already ordering parts. Let's get some water as well. Now here, over here with the water. We can turn it on. The machine is gonna ask us to prime because well, we haven't done that. Uh, hopefully we don't have a leak here oh yeah definitely a leak there let me see if i can just there you go but it needs to be primed so yeah we definitely need those o-rings now the machines should take uh, it's time to uh should start heating up The whole system is filling up for the first time as we basically replace the two-way valve and the water pump. Uh, since we got some water coming out through here, the two-way valve that we just replaced is definitely working. And since the machine was pushing up water through the through the system and trying to rinse, we know the other water pump doesn't have any air and it's pushing the, the, the it's pushing it through the brew unit. Um, let's just comp um, double check that. We're gonna use pre-ground and then we're gonna try to brew one shot of espresso. Since there's nothing um, in here, it should just try to pressurize and get water out of the, the system. There you go. There you go, water is now shooting through the spouts. And that's exactly what we should want to see. So there you have it. That's basically the whole process of disassembling these Gagia Anima uh, espresso machines. Um, or there's a couple other cycle machines that have the exact same uh, design with this with this thing with this display. The way it looks, the way it is. You still have to take it out from here. There's three screws in here that you have to remove. The whole process is very similar to a lot of these machines. Uh, but that's how you remove this. Uh, um, the, these panels, that's how you get to the bottom of the whole machine. As you saw, we basically disassembled the entire machine and then put it back together. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the like, hit the bell, and thank you so much for watching.